Ladies and gentlemen, most welcome to the second video of Let's Talk About, a show where I lose rating in order to experiment with systems that are already in place. Yay! And today we're going to talk about vehicles. Now, I know that there's already a lot of information about our beloved vehicles, the Dacia, the Buggy, the UZ, the two motorcycles, and then there's the three vehicles that are soon to be added that no one really knows anything about other than that one of them looks like the camper from GTA San Andreas. So we can't really do any research on the latter vehicles, but we can do tests on the current vehicles, which is what we're going to do, starting with the Buggy. Now we're going to try to get as accurate values as possible so all land tests are done in military base which you might understand was a bit hectic but I managed to do everything I wanted there the reason was because it's a straight road which is what we wanted we could also have gone for a bridge for instance but the probability of seeing someone there was higher now as we can see the buggy can maximum go to 91 km per hour without using the boost which is the default uh, key for that is shift on your keyboard but also it doesn't increase the speed limit of the buggy when pressing the boost acceleration was measured from 0 to 90 km per hour on, on all vehicles because some vehicles could barely make it up to 90 km per hour as we can see here, the buggy accelerates from 0 to 90 on approximately 9.5 seconds. When braking from maximum speed, it takes the buggy 1.4 seconds to stop completely. The four-seated vehicle Dacia could go 89 km per hour on normal top speed, and with the boost it could go all the way up to 112 km per hour. But as you might not see, because I'm cutting the clip time efficiently, the Dacia has tremendous problems reaching higher speeds without getting any boosts. And yeah, that's also something that can happen when you're driving a Dacia. The acceleration speed from 0 to 90 was around 9.4 seconds, and the braking time for maximum speed was 2.5 seconds. So it has roughly the same acceleration as the buggy, but the braking takes 1 second longer for maximum speed that is increased by only 20 km per hour. Moving on to perhaps the most popular vehicle, the UAZ. The UAZ can drive maximum 83 km per hour without any boosts, and when boosts are used it can go all the way to 99 km per hour. The acceleration is slightly slower on the UAZ with whole 9.7 seconds and the braking is almost the same as the Dacia, meaning it has worse brakes. Both bikes are missing boosts and the bike with the extra seat is going 9 km per hour slower than the bike without an extra seat. This bike can go all the way up to 131 km per hour, whilst the normal bike can go all the way to 140 km per hour. As you saw there, the bike with an extra seat has 6.8 seconds in acceleration and has 3.5 seconds to break down all the way from 131 km per hour. As suspected, the normal bike is slightly better as it not only can go faster, up to 140 km per hour, but also faster in acceleration, roughly 6 seconds. The braking time is also a lot better, 2.2 seconds. Now the last vehicle that I wanted to mention before summarizing all vehicles is the boat. Due to the boost not actually making any extra sound, it was not clear to me that the boat actually had a boost, but of course it does. The normal speed of the boat is 74 km per hour and the maximum speed with the boost is 90 km per hour. The acceleration takes 5.8 seconds and the braking is done in 4.2 seconds. Now you will see a bunch of numbers that will scare you or if you understand the concept of math it might actually be interesting. But long story short, the normal bike is obviously the best vehicle in terms of everything including braking. For a non-bike vehicle, the fastest vehicle is the Dacia, and also by acceleration it is Dacia, surprisingly enough. 
but I believe that it surprised me because the Dacia in reality is not going to be as helpful as the UAZ due to the fact that there's mountains almost everywhere on the current map. But we'll have to see how the new map will be. Perhaps it will be more plain and therefore perhaps Dacia will be the better choice. Personally I choose as many others the UAZ because of overall its convenience, the protection it gives, the way it climbs the mountains, everything about it is, to be honest, great. So therefore I'd choose UAZ any day on the current map. However, if bikes were giving more protection, obviously I would choose them as well because it's quite fun to play around with bikes, especially after I found out that you can control them mid-air. <laughs> Anyhow, I'd like to suggest something about the vehicles, but honestly, I don't think that the vehicles, as of the current state, can or needs to be changed, at least not for the things that I've talked about uh, in this video. I believe that the control of the vehicle, however it could be configured somewhat, uh, also crashing into certain objects with bikes, making the bike explode is quite ridiculous, but that's not really what this video was about anyways. Speaking purely about speed, braking and acceleration, I think that the current values are good enough. So with that being said, I hope that you learned something new and interesting. As always, if you have any feedback, please let me know. It helps me a lot so that I know what is good and what is bad. Furthermore, if you do like my videos, but don't feel like commenting, give it a like. I mean, it's free anyways, right? Until next time, cheers and have a great one.